Hello everyone, this is the Tubular Quad version 4 which is a FPV mini quad frame that I have been developing for the past three years. In the previous video I built the frame itself and discussed all of the changes that I've made and why this frame is how it is. And in today's video I'm going to be talking about the components that I'm running on the frame itself. But first, let's check out the installation of the components. Okay, I hope that you guys enjoyed that time lapse. One thing you might have noticed is that I actually put the previous version of this frame that I stole all the electronics from, the version three, back together because I like to save all of the previous versions of my frame. So I actually have the version one right here, which literally has spider webs on it. We have the version two, and then we have the version three, which you saw in the time lapse. So I just like to keep these so that I can see how my design has evolved over the years. Just something kind of fun for myself. So let's go ahead and talk about all of the electronics and knickknacks on this frame. If you want to see me talk about the design of the frame itself, 
go watch my previous video. So let's work from the outside in, starting with the props. So these are the Ethics K2 6x4 Twin Blade props. I have a full review of these props on my channel, so if you want to know more about these props, you can watch that. But to sum it up, I used to run the Emacs Avan long range props before I ran these. And these props have a similar control feel and smoothness to them. Not quite as good, but they have much more thrust and much more low end grip than the Emacs blades. So generally they just have more performance and they allow me to exploit the quad more and really push myself as a pilot. So that's why I've switched to these props. Looking at the ends of the arms, you can see I have these kind of arm bumpers or end caps, whatever you wanna call them. I usually despise this kind of thing because they add a lot of weight. But for this quad, it's kind of necessary because the walls of these tubes are only one millimeter thick at the ends of the arms. So they're still very strong, but there's just not a lot of material on the ends of the arms to deal with grinding against asphalt or concrete or things like that. So these little end caps are kind of consumable parts um, to save the ends of the arms, uh, whereas you don't really need them on a carbon plate frame because there's usually a lot more carbon to get scratched up and abraded away. Moving on to the motors, these are Hyperlite 2207 and a half 1922 KV motors. And the reason why I run these motors is the design of them is really lightweight. And I initially moved up to this 2207 and a half stator size from a 2206 stator size to get a little bit more response, which I got a little bit more response, but I really don't think it was worth the extra weight, especially taking into account the fact that this quad has a really tight center of gravity. So you don't need the extra response of these motors. So if I were to change something about this quad, I would probably get this same style of motors just in a 2206, which would probably save me around 15 grams, uh, which is a lot. Another thing is the KV is 1922, which is very low for a 4S quad, even on six inch props. And the reason why I run such a low KV is so that I have really precise control over the throttle because the RPM range of lower KV motors is less. So your throttle stick isn't gonna be as sensitive. Um, so that really allows me to, you know, hit gaps and fly low and do all the tricks that I want to do very precisely. And these motors are actually soft mounted on top of these custom soft mounts that I've made that match the motor mounts shape exactly. And that is just to save weight and it just looks really sleek. So you probably didn't even see that they were there. The motor wires run through the tubes, which is probably my favorite part of this design and then connect up to this four in one ESC. So this stack is the Hobbywing X rotor stack, the second generation. I believe they're on the third generation now, but to give you some background, I saw a lot of pilots running the first generation stack years ago, and they had a lot of success with that stack. So I went ahead and got the first generation stack. I had no problems with that. So when it came time for a new stack, I just went ahead and got the second generation stack, and I've had no problems with this stack either. So I think it's a 45 amp ESC and then a F4 flight controller on top of that. And a big change that I like for this second generation stack is now they have these soft mounting grommets built into the holes. So I no longer have to run the little vibration isolating standoffs. I can just run a steel screw all the way through the stack, but still have the flight controller soft mounted which I really like. Moving on to the back, you can see there's a big fat capacitor attached to the ESC, which I do believe came with the ESC. Attached to the bottom plate, we have the Lemon RX Diversity Satellite Receiver. So I do fly Spectrum, but ironically, I don't trust Spectrum's receivers because I've had a lot of issues with them in the past. I actually lost some fixed wing airplanes due to uh, receiver problems. So now I run these Lemon RX receivers on everything and I've had no problems with those. And I also wanna point out that Lemon RX was offering diversity satellites years before Spectrum even came out with diversity satellites. So I really like these receivers. On top of the receiver, we have a TBS Unify Pro 5 volt on the tubular quad version three. I was running the high voltage version 
of this video transmitter, but due to the new design of the mid plate, that actually won't fit in here anymore. Um, but the five volt does fit with absolutely no clearance issues. The only electrical concern I have with this build is that I'm running this transmitter directly off of the flight controller's five volt, uh, which might overstress it, I don't know. Attached to the video transmitter is the TBS Dum Dum. You may know it by the name of the Triumph Pro, and that has a UFL connector that plugs directly in to the video transmitter to save weight. Moving to the front of the quad, the camera I'm running is the Foxeer Aero version three micro, and it's a good camera. Really, uh, the main thing about this camera is it's a micro camera, so it's really light, and I really care about reducing weight. And it's mounted directly to the standoffs using the pyro drone style mount. And these actually are not from pyro drone. I reverse engineered their design and printed myself out duplicate copies that match the color of the rest of the 3D printed parts. So we kind of have a blue build going on here, although all of the blues clash and the props ruin it. And above that, we have the GoPro mount, which I custom designed. This design is based off of a Thingiverse GoPro mount, but I made a lot of modifications to it to reduce weight. And I also have a entire video dedicated to the design of this GoPro mount. Lastly, we have the battery, which is a China Hobby Line 70C 1300 milliamp hour 4S. I do not bother with the 100C version of this battery because I don't use super high amounts of throttle and six inch is relatively efficient. And I also haven't bothered moving to a higher cell count just because I don't really need any more power. If you can't tell by the fact that I'm running very low KV motors. And the battery itself is mounted on Umagrip Lite which is a very sticky battery pad. And the reason why I need that really sticky battery pad is because I'm only using one battery strap. So with that sticky battery pad, this battery is not going anywhere. So those are all of the components and knickknacks that I'm running on this frame. As you can see, I've put a big emphasis on reducing the weight of all the things that I put on this quad. This quad without the GoPro and battery comes out to 334 grams. With the GoPro and this particular battery, it comes out to 621 grams, which I think is a really good weight, especially considering that this is a six inch frame and it's carrying the heavier GoPro 7, not a session or anything like that. So this setup actually came out to about the same weight as the Hyperlite Glide six inch frame that I built about a month ago. And that tells me that I do probably want to switch to a lighter motor because the tubular quad version for frame itself without the electronics on it weighs 14 grams lighter than the hyperlight frame without electronics on it so i think all of that weight gain is probably coming from these motors and i think i could save 10 or 15 grams by swapping from the 2207 and a half to a 2206 but other than that i'm really happy with all of the components that i run on the tubular quad and i hope that you guys learned something from this video and maybe picked up on kind of my thought process as i pick out all of the components that i run on my quads so the next video is going to be a pid tuning tutorial by popular demand so i'm going to be starting with stock beta flight and tuning it for this quad so if you're new to the channel and you like this content or you don't want to miss that video make sure you guys get subscribed and please like this video if you liked it and thanks for watching